Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, regular specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed clinical applications of OCT in age-related macular degeneration. In this presentation, I will discuss OCT's clinical applications in pachychoroid, which is spectrum of diseases, including central serous chorioretinopathy, pachydrusin, Pachychoroid complicated with occult choroidal neovascularization, pachychoroid in neovascular age-related macular degeneration, and polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. OCT is the tool of choice to detect changes in thickness and structure of the choroid. As in pachychoroid, the choroid increases in thickness between 271 to 278 and higher with dilated halors, and sometimes there would be compression of sattler layer. Pachychoroid changes are not limited to the choroid, but it can be combined with Pigment epithelial detachment, PED, with increased reflectivity of the Brooks membrane forming double layer sign. Pachychoroid is sometimes associated with subretinal fluids and occasionally it can be associated with changes in outer retinal layers. Please remember that choroid best uh, studied using enhanced depth imaging or swept source OCT. One of the most common pachychoroid presentations in youth populations is central serous chorioretinopathy, CSCR, which features subretinal hyperreflective space containing fluids with elongation of photoreceptor layer, which may cause erosions with sometimes floating parts at the subretinal space as sign of an active leak and hold bad visual prognosis. However, and CSCR sometimes shows hyperreflective foci, which may resemble the remodeling of choroidal structure associated with increased choroidal thickness and, more, and may hold bad visual prognosis when presented in large numbers. Usually, OCT shows PED with the hyperreflective Brooks membrane forming a double layer sign. However, in chronic cases, RPE may show nodular or atrophic changes. Choroid will show increased thickness with dilated halors and compressed sattler layer in both eyes, even in unilateral CSCR. As in this example, a right eye has CSCR with subretinal fluids with increased choroidal thickness and dilated halors. The left eye for the same patient shows the increase choroidal thickness and dilated halors without any signs of CSCR. Typically, there are no interretinal cystic changes in cases of CSCR except for some chronic changes that resemble interretinal cavitation with or without increased retinal thickness. Some cases of CSCR got complicated with choroidal neovascularization, which features fibrovascular PED with subretinal and intraretinal fluids. OCT is the tool of choice to diagnose and follow up patients with CSCR, as in this case, where there is CSCR with subretinal fluids, PED, and pachychoroid and after treatment with sub-threshold microsecond laser, it shows decreased subretinal fluids. Sometimes CSCR may be presented as focal choroidal excavation, however, choroidal neovascularization should be rolled out in these cases. This cross-section shows focal choroidal excavation, which shows hyperreflective subretinal space with increased choroidal thickness and dilated halors. Sometimes pachychoroid can be presented with pigment epithelial detachment only, with no subretinal fluids or interretinal changes, as such cases may warrant only follow-up with no need of treatment. Pachychoroid can be presented in cases of non-neovascular AMD with intermediate and or larger drusen, which will have the same findings of intermediate non-neovascular AMD, but with increased thickness of the choroid and dilated halors. Pachychoroid in cases 
with complicated choroidal neovascularization, usually the choroidal neovascularization is type 1 without any signs of AMD, such as drusen, especially in a group of patients who are aged around 40 years. This is a case that shows intraretinal cystic changes and increased macular thickness and PED with increased reflectivity of Brooks membrane showing a double layer sign with increased choroidal thickness and dilated halor. This is cross-section for the same patient post-treatment with three consecutive monthly intravitreal VGF blockade agent showing a decrease in macular thickness with the resolved intraretinal fluids. However, pachycoid can be presented in cases of type 1 neovascular AMD, especially in older individuals, which will have the same features as type 1 neovascular AMD, but with increased growth of thickness and dilated halos. These cases may require treatment with photodynamic therapy adjacent to VEGF blockade agents if fail to respond to VEGF blockade agents as solo therapy. This is a case of neovascular AMD showing intraretinal cystic changes with increased macular thickness and drusen and fibrovascular PED. However, the cord is thick with dilated halos. This is a cross section for the same patient post treatment showing a decreased macular thickness with resolved intraretinal fluids. One of the disease spectra of pachycoroid is polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, which presents increased choroidal thickness with dilated halos and PD, showing increased reflectivity of Brooks membrane forming double layer sign. In polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, the PD usually uh, in M or domed shape, showing ink the adherent polyp sub RPE. However, in cases of active polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, there would be a subretinal fluids with less likely to have intraretinal fluids. That explains favorable visual prognosis when treated successfully. And sometimes it can be associated with RPE atrophy or subretinal hemorrhage. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned to the next presentation where I will discuss about clinical applications of OCT in pathological myopia.